When Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. When he's led to a fight and the jewel is due, then the red and the white and the blue come through when Captain America throws his mighty shield. Wow, did you write that? <laughs> no, that's from the cartoon in the 60s. Oh, okay, so you must be a little older than you look. A little bit, yeah, thanks. Well, that does show how long Cap's been around for. He was created in 1941 by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. And if you look at the original sketches, it's surprising how little he's changed in that time. Yeah, apart from the more ergonomic round shield, sure, but his personality has changed a fair bit over the years depending on who was writing him at the time. So our top five Captain America books are going to be based around the creatives who have ushered him through his various interpretations. Beginning with Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's Silver Age reboot collected in Marvel Masterworks Volume 1. This reboot began in 1963 and was a lot more successful than the attempted reboots in the mid-50s. Ah yes, when he was Captain America commie smasher. I remember it well. Again, older than you look. Beginning the story with Captain America in the 60s meant that Lee had to create a new origin, which included the idea of Cap being in deep freeze since the war. And after establishing his new role in the Avengers, the story jumps back in time to tell a few World War II based stories. Because who doesn't like to see a bit of Nazi punching? But it also jumps back to the 60s to introduce some of Cap's favourite enemies, like Batrock the Leaper. All up, Marvel Masterworks is a fun, nostalgic read, but it can be a little bit dated. So, let's jump forward in time to 1985 when Mark Grunewald took over as writer. He held on to that role for 10 straight years years, writing more Cap stories than anyone else has before or since. And there are so many Grimwald era stories to choose from. But in the end, we went with The Bloodstone Hunt, which features artwork by Kieran Dwyer. It's a classic tale of adventure, complete with mummies, shark attacks, magic stones, and even an unnecessarily slow-moving spiky death trap. Not to mention some great old-school bad guys like Baron Zemo, and the first appearance of Red Skull's right-hand man, Crossbones. Bloodstone Hunt was a lot of fun to read, and I think it was a pleasantly light change from the darker tone that comics were taking at the time. I mean, by the end of the Grunewald run, we had Captain America missing, presumed dead, the super soldier serum in his blood had started to go bad, and that set the table for a new reboot, this time at the hands of Mark Wade. Operation Rebirth, illustrated by Ron Garney and Pino Rinaldi, introduces a revitalised Captain America who owes his continued existence to the Red Skull, his greatest foe. Also resurrected is Agent Sharon Carter, Cap's former love interest. For me though, the best thing about this relaunch was that it featured a cosmic cube that had Adolf Hitler's mind trapped in it. When you start your story with a Hitler cube, you know you're in for a fun ride. Of course, also in this story, Wade throws Cap into conflict with the government, which was to become a recurring theme over the years. And Grimwald did play with that a lot from time to time as That's well. true, that's true, but in those days, a lot of the time it turned out there was a supervillain manipulating things from behind the scenes. One thing was for sure though, even Captain America could not stay wide-eyed and idealistic forever. And nowhere is that more apparent than in the Ultimates. Written by Mark Miller, with art by Brian Hitch, there is a vastly different tone to this arc than you'll find in pretty much any other Captain America story. Thor is a hippie, Bruce Banner is a whiny loser, and Hank Pym is a wife beater. And honestly, it's not my cup of tea. I mean, there's a clear attempt to reimagine these characters without the nobility and the transcendence that we've always seen in them, but I've got to say that the cynicism of the world that Millar's created here is just kind of depressing. Although I do think that Hitch's artwork is very impressive and has a real sense of cinematic majesty. For me, it was a brave new take on these characters, mixed in with a good helping of pop culture referencing and some off-colour humour. And The Ultimates is also an important turning point for the mythos that asks the question, how can Steve Rogers maintain his idealism in the face of the dark modern world? Well, I think that is a question that's answered quite well by our fifth and final book, Captain America Winter Soldier. The ultimate collection of this arc covers three storylines all written by Ed Brubaker. Out of Time, illustrated by Steve Epting. The Lonesome Death of Jack Monroe, illustrated by John Paul Leon and Tom Palmer. Then finally, Winter Soldier, illustrated by Steve Epting with Mike Perkins. For me, this is probably the pinnacle of Captain America storytelling. I loved every page of this book. And it's certainly well deserving of its Eisner Award for Best Writing. Brubaker hands us an angrier Steve Rogers, a man at odds with everything around him who still tries to do the right thing. The story straddles wartime heroics, futuristic spy adventure, and gives a more complete image of who Captain America is than I have ever seen in one book before. 
more than any other story arc, this one's recommended reading before seeing the new Captain America film. Yeah, of course you might have guessed that from the title, but you know what, even if you're not a Captain America fan, this is a book worth reading. It's got a great story, it's got fantastic artwork, and the World War II scenes are exactly like I remember it. You should pick this up now. Seriously, how old are you? Alright, there's no need to shout. Kids are so loud with your MTV Walkman players and your jeans pulled down around your knees. Better go have a glass of milk. Lie down. You can't get off my lawn! <laughs>